It's time for the Alien Conspiracy Podcast. We are your hosts, Agent ETA, Agent Kruger, and Agent Anderson. Come along as we examine UFO sightings, conspiracies, and all things strange. You can follow the show on Twitter at AlienConPod. We also have an email address, AlienConPod at ProtonMail.com. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to check us out on Discord where you can interact with the hosts and listen to live shows. Links in the description. This week's episode, The Coral Castle. Ooh, Hail nice, to nice, the nice. yeah, homeboy. Dude, Coral Castle is one of my favorite, like, modern-day megalithic sites. I mean, it's the, one of the only ones, you know, really out, out there, but it is on my bucket list of far, as far as, like, places I eventually want to go visit, you know? And this one's fun for me, too, because it's one of the very few things we talk about on this show. It doesn't happen that often where we talk about something that you can go and visit yourself right here in the good old U.S. of A. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. It yeah, I, I'm 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 on the opposite end of the 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 <laughs> yeah. continental United States here, but it, I definitely plan, like I said, to go there eventually one day and visit. It's on my bucket list for sure. You yeah, know? And, and it's not it wouldn't be that hard to get to. You know, so yeah, why the hell not? Yeah, especially you catch and, a. It was made in the 20th century too. You know. Yeah, catch a flight in the down season. It probably wouldn't be too bad from here to Florida. No, nah. no, nah, I probably oh, wouldn't yeah. be. You just have to. Uh, the humidity is something I wouldn't know how to deal with. I know, I know heat. I know heat, but I don't know heat with humidity that often. Yeah, yeah there's two bad. heats. There's dry heat, and then there's wet heat, right? And there's that's ugh. yeah. Well, ugh. I think, yeah, you, you get used to it, you know. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It's, just, it's one of those things you just put up with, you know. Yeah. But yeah, dude, the Coral Castle is an awesome freaking place. It, it's amazing what one man was able to accomplish. So you know, supposed to have been by himself, you know, and um. Yeah, that's it's amazing what he what he did. If you if you've seen pictures of this place, video footage of this place, to to look at all these large stones and stuff that this guy moved and and created this whole structure out of, it, it's almost unbelievable that one person, especially somebody who was actually a, the guy was a, a a very small stature. Um, I don't think I wrote I didn't write down in my notes how tall the guy was, but he was described as being a very small fella to begin with. So it's like, even you know even that would, I would think, hold you back a little bit, even though, you know, we'll, we'll get into like the, the technology and stuff that, you know, he, he, uh, was supposed to have used, but, uh, it, it's an amazing structure. Even, even if it wasn't, uh, built with, you know, amazing, like high technology, what have you, like some people surmise, uh, it's still freaking impressive. And I, and, uh, yeah, I will get into that. I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Small yeah, body, yeah. big brain. Big but, brain, dude. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's one of those big brain fellas. So the fellow we're talking about here is Edward Leedskalnin. L-E-E-D-S-K-A-L-N-I-N. That's a difficult for me to pronounce last name, but not the worst we've seen on this show. <laughs> and Yeah. Right? Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah. He's he, a Latvian immigrant. He immigrated to the United States in 1912, I believe, right? Uh, I didn't actually write down his exact name of think, name. What am I saying? His exact date of immigration. I just sort of wrote down the general's uh, stuff. So oh, yeah, if, yeah. if you got more details, I didn't write than me, that down either. But I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's 1912. I, I remember uh, reading that. All right. Well, if if you got the deets, then go ahead, Agent ETA. Well, uh, he was an individual that actually came from a family of stonemasons. And so it's no wonder why, you know, he had some skills and, um, you know, ability to move stone or even to, even just to begin to quarry it. You know what I mean? Right, right. And the, the, the stone that he did quarry in, um, in Florida down there, very south, uh, it was actually fossilized coral limestone. And so it's not the heaviest of materials and it's actually easier to work with than like something like a st- like solid granite or something like that. Even though there mm-hmm. are techniques to, to work with these, uh, substances, you know, and, and make things easier on yourself. So um, that's the reason why he was skilled already when he got to the United States. Um, so when, when it's it's been told that when he got to the United States, um, he worked like in the uh, the t- uh, the the lumber industry up in like the northwest of the United States, and that's where he learned a lot of his like like uh, skills when it comes to like working with like a um, like pulleys and stuff like that, and 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 uh like making tripods and stuff because he obviously there's a lot there's a lot of pictures of like the tripods and like the pulley systems that he he was using um on the on the coral castle 
And so he, you know, shored up his skills even more working in those industries. And then he went on a mission to try to find the light, the, the right kind of land. And, and just as everything with this guy's life, like the, the way he would describe stuff, he was always like kind of cloak and dagger about it. He never went into like really great detail. And you could tell, I mean, obviously the guy was a, a very extremely intelligent individual. I mean, just look at what he did. If you see any of these photos of, of the Coral Castle, you, I mean, it's, it's quite obvious that the guy was extremely intelligent, damn near probably a genius, most likely probably some kind of a genius, you know? But um, so uh, he, uh, you know, was on the, a search for the right p plot of land. And he would always say like, he didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but he'd know it when he saw it. And so, I mean, there's a lot of these type of quotes from this guy, you know, that, that is kind of very general, but he doesn't describe any kind of details. He's always kind of very secretive. You know what I mean? Right. So, so I, that kind of actually adds to the mystery of the whole situation also, you know? So, so, but at any rate, um, yeah, he, he found the right plot of land, you know, eventually. And, um, the, one of the most amazing things, and, and we'll get more into this later also, uh, uh but like. One of the things I find absolutely amazing is he, he basically built the Coral Castle twice. He had it on one one plot of land, and he ended up moving it. Um, and it, it like I heard a couple different stories why he ended up moving it eventually. One of it was because uh, like there was a group of thugs that like tried to rob him there. They thought that he wow. was like you know holding like he had like a big stash of money or something. But also, but it's also described. I heard it described as. Basically, like, the, you know, there was a lot of building in the area. The community was getting bigger. So he wanted to be, you know, away from everything. So he moved it to a different spot about 10 miles away. And the amount of block that was in the Coal Castle, I've heard it described as being around 300 million pounds of block. So, I mean, if, if uh, either way, however much it was, it's a lot of freaking damn block. And to move that 10 uh, miles away. I can curl away, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the, no big deal, bro. The right. total number I saw was... <laughs> my morning workout. The total number I saw was 1,100 tons, but I don't know how accurate that uh -huh. is, so who knows. But it, 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 any way you cut yeah. and slice it, it's it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Either way, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. But, but uh, I mean, yeah, dude, like like the this monument he made to his so, well, all right so anytime anybody would ever ask him why are you doing this why are you building this he would always say that he was building it for his sweet 16 which i, I think it turns out i i read like a, an article that said um when he was in latvia he got basically like stood up uh by a woman that he was supposed to marry like the day before the, their wedding and and some people think that that's what he's talking about his sweet 16 or whatever but yeah uh -huh. So there, there's actually yeah, which, a lot of different sucks. versions of this particular story if you look around. And yeah, one version says ones, yeah. that he was rejected by his 16-year-old fiance Agnes Skvust, uh one day before the wedding. Yeah. Another version says that it was a completely different Oof. lady and she was only a couple years younger than him, not 10. And her family demanded like a 2,000... Uh, ruples or whatever, I th whatever their local currency is. I think it's yeah, something like that. Whatever their currency is, it was way more than he had, so he couldn't actually pay it. So then the wedding didn't go off. There's other stories about him being involved with like the local uh, anarchist party or who knows. It, there's any number of shenanigans that he was reputed to be involved in that he was fleeing from or escaping. Um, but one theory is that he wasn't actually engaged. So the story is that he was engaged to a 16 year old girl. We would call him a girl, but Hey, maybe back then they were women. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't yeah, blame well. me. I'm just the messenger, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but some people say that he's actually was just obsessed with the number 16. And if you look around the coral castle, the number 16 pops up all over the place. For example, there are 16 stairs going up to the tower. Or if you look at the, there's like a picture with a sun with rays of light coming off of it and there's 16 rays of light. So that number was mm -hmm. significant to him in some way. So it could just be that that was a story he made up. And this guy did seem to have some pretty good marketing skills. Although yeah. his, uh, as far as like how much he charged for his services, for the tours of the place, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but uh, I don't think he was so good at the actual finance of the place, although he was good at the marketing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I just, sorry to interrupt you there, ETA, but I just, I read up a little bit on that and there's, there's a lot going on with that particular backstory, but uh, it's, it's sort of up in the air. As far as I'm aware, we don't know for sure what happened with that. 
I wasn't going to go. I wasn't going to go a whole lot more into that, but yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I don't know. Let's move on to uh, what the actual core castle is. And, yeah, let's and, do it. Okay, so um, one of the uh, amazing things about the the coral castle is it's obviously using very large blocks of fossilized coral, but it also like he doesn't use any mortar in between the blocks and stuff. They're just laid on top of each other, so they have you know pretty pretty decent fine tolerances, you know, because they're able to to um, mount directly to each other, what have you. And um, like I said, he did it by himself. You know, which is absolutely, even if you're using just like regular technology, like, like chains and, and pulleys and, and stuff like that, like it's still pretty damn amazing. You know, it's, 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 it's quite incredible what, what he was able to do. And like, he even has like, like the front entrance to the, uh, the coral castle and I, I, everybody who's ever looked into this has seen the pictures or the videos of it. He had a very large stone doorway that was set up like on a, a wheel bearing uh, with a metal rod going through it and it, like you can move it effortlessly like uh, before it broke actually recently i guess uh sometime recently it broke so it doesn't really work the way it used to but when it did work uh very well now uh, you could move this thing with one finger and it's a giant i forget how much it, how big it was like how much it was supposed to have uh weighed it's supposed but, um, to it's supposed to weigh itself is, is, is it's supposed to weigh about nine tons and the first time it broke was like okay, in the yeah. 80s I think 83, if I'm, if I remember that correctly and they fixed it twice yeah, they, since then, but the original mechanism, it was supposedly so well balanced that you could move it with just a finger. Like you just touch it with your finger and you could move it. But people say that nowadays, even though it's been repaired, cause that, you know, like you're saying, they, he just used like an old truck bearing or something and uh, yeah. that rusted out and they had, they've replaced it a couple times now. And now, even though they've replaced it, it's still not as, as good as it used to be. Like it's harder to push than it used to be. So whatever he did was, you know, just using an old truck bearing, I guess was way better than what they were able to figure out in more modern times, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And maybe it's not as balanced as it was before or what have you, but like, yeah, I mean, this guy like knew how to find, well, obviously what, like one of the, the, the things that he did there in that door is he found like the absolute like center of balance of that piece of stone. And then he was, you know, he, he, he worked off of that, you know? So in order, in order to have something that well balanced, you have to find the, the exact center of balance, you know? So he obviously knew how to do that. Yeah. Man. But yeah. I thought I was thinking about that and I saw somebody, a discussion where somebody's saying, I, all you have to do is find the center of balance. It's easy. And I was thinking about it. It's like, it's not as easy as you think because it's not just a one dimension problem. You have to find the center of balance in all three dimensions in order for it to work that well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, we're talking about yeah. a three dimensional rectangle here. I'm sure there's a different name for that. I don't know, but it's not like yeah. you, you <laughs> just draw a line down the middle of the thing. You also have to do it in the other dimensions because if it's off by just a tiny, tiny, per, like even by a hair, it's not going to work right. So whatever this guy did, that's, that's why, you know, I think what you were referring to earlier when you said this guy was a yeah. genius, he was able to dial this stuff in and maybe we'll talk about some of the theories, but whether or not there was something supernatural or weird or whatever going on, whatever the situation this guy was able to figure it out and, you know, either mm -hmm. there was something, either he had very high tech tools that he shouldn't have had, or I think more likely he was probably just really, really good at doing this stuff. Yeah. He definitely had a knack for it. That's for sure. At least like, like quarrying stone and shaping stone because yeah. there was, I mean, there was all sorts of different features to the coral castle that like, you know, at first, like you're just like, all right, well, that doesn't necessarily make sense. But I mean, like he had like half moons and stuff and, and a lot of it was like a, um, it seemed like it related to like uh, astrological, whatever. I don't know, whatever he was trying to alignments. Uh, yeah, 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 alignments and stuff like that. But I mean, he he made all sorts of different like tables and chairs and stuff out of this coral stone, and um, he even had like like water fountains and stuff. And, and like it was, I mean, he just he made the freaking everything, you know, out of the stone. And and it, it's just extremely freaking impressive, you know, ju just the like the, the tables and chairs that he made and like the walls, you know, I mean, all, all of it is, you know, but yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's actually pretty damn amazing what, what he was able to accomplish, you know? It's, yeah, it's, of course. I mean, even when you mentioned that he moved it, he moved it block by a block. And I mean, uh -huh. the fact that the city was created with using only hand tools and being able to work with that type of stone, you ask yeah. yourself, what if like some of his ancestors were those that were marble 
like worked with stone before and it's just in his blood, you know? I uh, probably not, but you know. Like yeah. I can dream, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and there, there's some, there's actually some crazy stories about people that uh, were supposed to have like, like witnessed him do his work. A lot of people w- would say that like they, they were tr- like, you know, a lot of locals would try to spy on him and try to figure out how he's doing what he's doing because <laughs> he was always. Uh, it seems like he was always very open, you know, to like, like, like let people come on in and, and check out his cool castle and stuff. And, and obviously, um, you know, he he made a living doing that. Also, he would charge like I think uh, ten cents or something like that, and at some point, like. 25 cents for a different type of tour or something or but um or, or i think the 25 cent thing was like a like a a donation if you wanted to make a donation you could like he would say like 25 cents would say, be yeah. Off, you know. yeah i thought it was like mostly free from what i've read i, I thought it was mostly well, free but 10 I, cents I've back heard, in the day that yeah that was, I, well i've that heard, heard that too if free. you didn't have any money like if, sh- if you showed up with any money uh with no money then he would still give you a tour he'd be like all right well well you know fuck it here like, right, come, right. come on come on in you know either way but like uh it, so the guy doesn't seem to be like a like necessarily a hermit, even though he had some qualities kind of like that, you know. Well, he lived he, there. He lived on the property. Sorry to cut oh, you yeah. off, but he lived on the property itself, which I thought <laughs> that's yeah. that's commitment to your artwork, right? I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and he chose that property particularly because it didn't have a whole bunch of topsoil, and that coral uh, was like like very you know shallow, you know. So the bedrock, mm-hmm. which was which was that fossilized coral. And which is what he was after to build his structures, you know. So he cored all that like right on site, you know. So I yeah. mean, that, that that's a uh, pretty smart too, you know. You know, you and, know the irony. I I don't know if it, it would be irony, but like you know how the the city was spurned due to love, or like it was it was built in for love, basically. Like that's why for, or lost for love my there. Sweet sixteen, right? I don't and, know. I don't know why I gave that a fucking French accent. He's from Latvia. Yeah. <laughs> they probably <laughs> that sound like, like an French, accent. You know? yeah, I'm not sure yeah. what Latvian <laughs> sound like. Right. Well, I don't think so. I would say like more Swedish <laughs> or not Swedish, but I mean the fact you can actually get married there still. That's I think that's that's pretty funny. Like there's some irony in there, right? He built it for love, and like you can still, you know celebrate there for your love with your sweet 16 or whatever yeah uh, well La- lafayette was it's like it's right next to like L- with the uh lithian what, what the fuck is that freaking the country scandinavian Lithuania? oh what is it it's I'm like it's sure. like no it's like isn't it like it's like in the like the northeast of uh europe isn't it um I, I'd, I'd have to maybe. pull up a map my, my, to be honest. My Poland, my, I think, or some shit. My European geography is not that great, <laughs> but one detail I wanted to throw I'm in. I'm pretty there, sure I'm right. I'm yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, one detail though I wanted to throw in is that if you wanted a tour, he would often just be chilling at home. So if you wanted a tour, you'd have to walk up, and there'd be a sign that would say "Ring Bell" twice, and if you wanted a tour, and uh, you'd have to ring the bell twice. That's like, that's kind of weird. Like. So if you ring it once, he just ignores it. If you ring it three times, does he pull out a shotgun and come and shoot you? It's like, it's got to be exactly <laughs> twice, right? <It's> just, <laughs> he pulls out his coral gun or his like coral slingshot shooting coral at you. Yeah. Or for oh, the coral suck. God, for those final <laughs> fantasy fans out there, you're his coral sword, right? Whoa. Oh, <laughs> now you're crossing yeah. boundaries. I know, right? <laughs> oh, did we mention, by the way, that it wasn't actually built out of coral? I don't think we mentioned that Ooh. yet. I, I thought it was, so. it was the a fossilized used. coral limestone. Uh, it, well, it was it's a particular kind of limestone called oolite, and it's it's not oolite. actually coral. <laughs> but maybe oolite. I don't know if maybe like the the name like the street name the vernacular what the cool kids call it is coral you know like you got those cool kid the geologists that hang out behind the geology building smoking cigarettes maybe there's maybe Uh they call it coral but uh well you were smoking coral back in that day i know right (laughs) but from what i found it's actually not coral it's uh oolite o-o-o-o-l-i-t-e or something let me i'm I'm trying to find it in my notes here oolite it's oh, some, no, I can't something it. like that. Is that um, anything like Ublik? No, no, completely different. But Ublik is pretty damn cool, though. <laughs> I know what that stuff is. Yeah. Like, what the hell is Ublik? What in the hell is Ublik? I'm sorry, I have to ask. Oh, my, dude. My kids made some Ublik? of that, yeah. and they were playing with it for days. Like, not, not consecutively, yeah. but, you know, they, did, they kept it for a long time and kept playing with it. But I am, I am, I am puzzled. Okay, so... 
Ublick <laughs> is is a material that's made out of you can make it at home. You probably everybody listening right now has the ingredients at home to make it. If you go in your kitchen, Is grab yourself some water, some water, and some cornstarch, and mix huh? them together. Uh, you'd have to look up the ratio, but then it makes this weird sort of fluid material that, if you move slowly, then it's a liquid. But if you put pressure on it, then it becomes a solid. And it is Ooh. so much fun to play with. Uh, it kind of reminds me of if you guys have seen that movie, um, the original. Well, I think yeah, pretty sure it's the first Dune movie by um, who's that? David Lynch. How the the shields they used. If you moved slow, yeah. you could get through the shield. But oh if you yeah, move fast. Yeah, but oh. like if you hold it in your hand, it'll run through your fingers. But if you oh. clench your fist, it'll become solid, and you can just hold it. It's really weird stuff. That's so almost mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that. What's it called? Like not magic sand, but whatever that stuff was called, where it's like you put it in water, it does exactly what you're saying. Like just becomes like, you know, a liquid and then, you know, a solid one. Or when you pull it out, it becomes sandy. And then we put it in, it's more constructive. Like you can play, play with it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, if you, now if I got to try any kind of force. It becomes a solid basically almost. That's dope. You know, yeah. Moment, we should make modern armor out of that now. Body armor. Yeah. Eh. I'm just kidding. A little heavy. Yeah, that would probably be <laughs> pretty heavy, heavy, actually. I'm yeah. wearing Ooblick armor, level 10. Oolite, yeah, so I found it in my notes. Yeah, O-O-L-I-T-E. It's a sedimentary rock, apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, I mean, maybe it is a form I of coral? Not, I don't know. I I'm not a geologist, that. so I could be wrong about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah me neither. But, all right, so... One of the things I thought was interesting was one of the versions of how he actually got to the United States was that he went through Canada and he made his way all the way down to Florida. And technically he was, well, technically, I mean, this either is or is not, but he was actually like an illegal immigrant. And eventually he applied for his, his status to become legal. But as he made his way down, he worked in the logging or lumber industry and that could also explain some of the knowledge he gained for having, having, you know, knowing how to build things and move these blocks around. But mm-hmm. whether or not there's, this is one of those ones where there's an awful lot of stories out there about what happened. <laughs> and it's hard to know, you know, you think like the more time that passes, the easier to be able to tell what happened and what didn't happen. But in reality, it becomes, uh, the, the stories, because they, they gather and then they grow and then there's more of them over time. And it's harder and harder to tell what actually happened. You know, the further away Mm, you get from the actual, from the story, you know, but another anecdote I thought interesting was that he claimed that he came down with uh, tuberculosis when he was young and he was able to heal himself with magnets and oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think that this was some, this was a story he told. He was really into magnet, you know, magnets and stuff like that. He had in, in the coral castle, he had something he built that was like a little AC generator. That was like a hand crank thing hooked up to a couple light bulbs that would light it up. And he, like, he was super into this kind of stuff, but I think that he told this story, either he told this story as a way of, you know, sort of marketing, right? Making things seem more uh, mysterious or maybe he really did think this and he was misdiagnosed because yeah, I, you ain't curing TB with magnets. Sorry guys. Well, <laughs> That's well, not he a thing. A, <laughs> he even wrote, yeah. he even wrote a book on it. It, it was called magnetic current. Yeah. Really? I think, I think he wrote like three books and all or something like that, but most of it was like the other two books for like his like philosophy on life and stuff like that. Well, but the one book that was wow. like, but What's books, up? books in quotation marks, they were kind of pamphlets. They're really short. Y- yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Short stories. We'll call Man. them short stories. But yeah, <laughs> those are bold Man. statements right there. I mean, hopefully a lot of people didn't put all their eggs in that basket. Yeah. Huh? His publishers. Yeah. They let him down in that case. Yeah. Did we talk about the teenagers yet? So he didn't nope. like to see oh, the ones that observed him uh, building or yeah. whatever, or moving blocks. He didn't like to have people observe him working or so the legend goes. 
and he would only work at night. And one time, uh, you know, ETA said people snuck up on him and some teenagers saw him working and they said that the blocks were floating like hydrogen balloons. So yeah. this is, and then they, they also said, if I'm not, if this is the same story, I'm, uh, I'm remembering, they actually claimed that he had like, like what looked like, like uh, ice, ice cream cones on his hands. Yes. And he was like directing the block, like with, his, with his hands. Yeah. The hell? Okay. Exactly. Or what if yeah. it was the magnets? Well, and also pe- people say that like he actually, he actually claimed um, quite often when people would, would get onto the subject that he knew how the pyramids were built. Like he himself, oh. he himself was a uh, quoted as saying that, you know? So yeah, he knew like, the was secrets he using the same of methods? the pyramids. I don't know. That's what he claimed. And mm-hmm. yeah, when people would ask him, Hey, how did you build all this stuff? He'd be, he'd give vague answers like, ah, it's easy if you know how to do it, but he never came yeah. out and explained it. He would just make yeah. they have statements. ice cream cone for hands. I, I think at least at least one part of that why he never came out like well like I said before like uh, why he was so cloak and dagger about the, like the details about what he was doing. It absolutely could have been because he was using some kind of secret technique or what have you to move these blocks. It absolutely could have been, but I think part of it is actually like like we were talking about before like a marketing ploy. You know, he wanted to be mysterious. He, hmm. he wanted people to wonder about this. That way, they would want to come out and visit his coral castle and and pay him to take a tour. Could be. You know? Could be. Could be. Yeah, because this is how this guy but, made I his mean, living was basically by giving tours. He didn't have a regular job. He just he got money from people coming to visit him and paying him for the tours. Yeah. So that yeah, that was one really interesting anecdote by the teenagers there. He was quoted at one point as saying that he used a perpetual motion holder to move the stones. But again, like we we're saying, I think this was more of part of like a, a marketing thing that he did. And he, so he moved, when he moved from one part of Florida to the other, it was only 10 miles and it was, it took him about three years to move the castle from locations. We mentioned that earlier, but the reason why I'm going back to that is because, um, it's, I like, it's really fun to think that he had some sort of magical powers, but if it took him three years to move everything, 10 miles, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe he was just using I mean, some regular stuff. You know, maybe it for wasn't large, for, possibly. Yeah, for these yeah. large blocks and stuff, like it, it would make sense. It would take you quite some time to move them all. I mean, that, that that's an accomplishment in itself. Just, I, I mean, you say only ten miles, but for but these by large yourself, building blocks, like that's but by that's yourself. A, that's that is quite a feat. Right? Yeah. Well, he didn't I mean, do it by himself. He uh, the story goes that he he hired like a local uh, like flatbed truck driver. And he would have the truck driver like go around the corner or something like that while while he was moving the blocks and like 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 loading them onto the truck. Obviously, uh-huh. it'd usually be like one block at a time for the big ones, you know. Right. And right. um, so he like the 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 story goes that like he would load them very fast and and it wouldn't take very much time at all. And like the the truck driver would, be, would always be amazed how fast he loaded this giant block onto the back of his truck, you know. Huh. So, I mean, I mean, you I, ask yourself with the, sorry to cut in, but like, I wonder how, what the max load for those beds were back in the day, those trailer beds. So I, mean, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it could be, I mean, it depends on uh, like what kind of truck we're talking about here, but right? I, I, I'm not super familiar with like, you know, I'm somewhat familiar with like the, the types of trucks that are around back then, but I couldn't imagine they could have had a, a giant capacity. Like some of these blocks, like, like the ones that were like, what, was like 30 tons or something like that. Some of these blocks, some yeah. of them were. Well, I yeah, mean, the I gates alone, sorry, just to add on to that, the gates alone, what they weighed, uh, I have it here somewhere, the the gates alone weighed nine tons just by themselves, just just yeah. one gate, it, I'm it, if, I, if I well, read that correctly. Yeah. I, I imagine, That's still like, crazy, that's insane. I imagine he Possible. must have had like a special, it was, we're not talking about him throwing that on the back of a Ford F-150 or something, he must have had a special trailer no, yeah. for it. Because the the heaviest block, as far as I could find anyways, was 30 tons. You're not moving that okay, yeah. with a normal truck. He must have had a very special Absolutely vehicle, not. something with, you know, a big fat engine, and it probably went at a very a, slow speed. A very you know? stout suspension as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's Well, that's why I think, I think it was, they had to have a trailer on that. Like, there's no way that was an actual put on the truck he had to be hauling that on some kind of trailer or something right yeah it's just yeah just too heavy that would make more sense 
Well, I mean, if 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 it took them that long, the three years it took and whatnot, I mean, maybe it just like inch by inch with using a log pulley system where it's like. You know, maybe there was, you know, just how they say that the stone head or not stone hedge, I apologize, but the, the stone heads and, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Those giant heads out in the, I'm totally failing here, but they said they transferred them through just like the log and pulleys, like just pulled them along the logs and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah, those, like that truck driver pulled it those, with the logs. What are you talking about? Those stone heads from that video game life force. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That old, anyway, that old game, <laughs> side scroll and space shooter, and then <laughs> that game is so Damn. weird. You're in a spaceship and you're flying along, and uh, at some point in the this is the first level. At some point, there's those big stone heads like spitting stuff at you. You're like, what? The, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> this is, this Damn, is the weirdest I game need to ever. Play that. I mean, well, <laughs> actually, pretty much all the games were weird back then, but <laughs> yeah, that sounds badass though. I gotta get that for my phone. But emulator you're, you're talking about the easter island games right or games the easter island thank you yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes easter island heads yeah oh yeah. yeah and how they transported those was just like you know cutting down the trees and then like pulling them on top of them and rolling them which is you know you can and people still do that today with like certain heavy objects when it comes to shipping containers on like land and stuff that they don't have many they don't have many uh you know, resources at their disposal, like heavy trucks and like truck beds and stuff like that. So I can imagine him throwing down those logs or whatever, and then like, you know, transporting them with the the help of his truck buddy. So, I mean, that, that's could be a possibility, but still, that's still quite a feat to do with like the limited resources at his disposal. So that's pretty cool. Well, the the majority of the equipment that he used is, is still on site there because, like nowadays, it's considered like an like an actual museum. And what's well, they call it a museum, the Coral Castle Museum, and um, a lot of the equipment that he uses is still on site there. Some of it's gone, but but most of it's still there. And, and most of the equipment is pretty uh, you you could call it somewhat primitive. But he did have very large, like like block and tackles, like these pulley systems with 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 very beefy chains and stuff. And he would like double them up and triple them up. And there's there's pictures of that when he has like a, um, a tripod set up with like multiple you know pulleys like uh, set up you know towards the top and stuff. And, and obviously the the more mechanical advantage that that uh, you're using, the more weight you can pull. It's just the tripod has to be able to handle that weight too, right? So the whole mm-hmm. structure has to be able to handle the the force of whatever weight you're trying to pull or move. But I mean, th- he obviously was was very experienced in that. He knew what the heck he was doing when, when it comes to that kind of stuff, because it, it was it's on site. You can see pictures of it. There's, there, there's actually a videotape of him doing this, but like some of the videotape and the pictures don't really tell you a whole lot because the block is already quarried, and like th- there's not a whole lot of evidence like to prove like how he actually quarried the stuff and like how he did it himself. And and it seems like he did it easily, you know, um, it, it's kind of one of those things. That's one of the big questions, you know, that, that people have is like, how the hell did he do some of this stuff as fast as he did and as efficiently as he did by himself, you know? Mm. And I mean, like I said before, the guy must have been an absolute genius ju- just in like quarrying block and, and like, like uh, as far as like uh, being a Mason goes, you know what I mean? The, the, the guy must have just took into this stuff like naturally. He was, he was born to do it. You know what I mean? But, by, but yeah, by he, the way, uh, some of the weirder stuff like involving like the. Say, by the way, I really like that truck, yeah, truck Virginia buddies. Anderson? That sounds like, you know, like if, if the Hells Angels have like an opposite, like an, you know, an alternate dimension, but they're like good guys. And instead of motorcycles, it's trucks, you know, <laughs> it's, it's going to be. The truck uh, buddies. Uh-huh. That's from from the evil dimension. That's what the Hell's Angels are in the evil dimension. They're the truck buddies. <laughs> but yeah, so oh, nice. Ed there worked on the Coral Castle pretty much off off and on pretty much his whole life until he passed away at the age of sixty four. And at that time, uh, I think what was that nineteen fifty one? I think when he passed away, he didn't have a will yeah. or anything. So the castle or the land passed to an, his closest living relative, which was a nephew in Michigan named Harry. Now, um, maybe that's just a coincidence, but uh, maybe it was the infamous Harry Potter. No, no, that's stupid. I'm going <laughs> to edit that out. That was dumb. <laughs> but, okay. So 
uh, the it was sort of hard to track the lineage of what happened to the there. There's different stories about this is sold it to this, they sold it to that, whatever. But at some point, it ended up in the hands of a commercial company who are running it as a tourist operation. And some people complain that, you know, you got to pay, I don't know, it's probably something like 20 bucks or something. You could look it up on their website, I'm sure. Which, by the way, shout out to them. Their website is just coralcastle.com and their address is Coral Castle Museum 28655. I think it says it's, the font is really small and my notes are far away from me or my computer, but uh, 28655 South Dixie Highway, Miami, Florida, Miami, Miami, Florida, <laughs> <laughs> 33033. And their phone number is 305-248-6345. If anybody's interested in checking it out themselves, huge shout out to them. But some people are like, yeah, it costs money. I'm like, yeah, it costs money. But the upside is that because it's a commercial operation, they have money coming in. So they will spend money to keep it maintained. Otherwise yes. it would just become a dilapidated rundown thing that would probably fall yeah. apart sooner than later, especially because the stone that they used is somewhat susceptible. It's not like a hard stone. It's a fairly soft stone. So it's pretty susceptible to weathering from what I read. Yeah. Right. And it, so it, it's really good that there is a commercial operation, even though it costs money, but the, the fact that it costs money is kind of a good thing. So don't let that, don't let that keep you from going there and, you know, yeah, helping yeah. to support this, whatever you want to call it, this monument. It's, it's in the registry well, of historical areas or yes. whatever, but yeah, it is. It, well, and it's, it seems like they're taking good care of it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, like it's a, they're not changing anything about it. You know what I mean? They're not like making it into something that it's not, which happens every once in a while with, with I mean, I wanted to say stuff like this, but this is really the only, uh, site like it. Like it's, it's, it's a unique site. It's, it is one, one, of a kind. one of one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, but, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody had bought it and then like, like kind of kept it as a memento and like, like kept it to themselves and not allowed the public to, to come and visit and stuff, you know, like, yeah, I think it's a good thing that, that, that actually in this, you know, it's not always the case, but sometimes a corporation does do a good thing when they buy a, a, a property or structure, but just, just imagine, uh, imagine if like as a private individual, just for example, like I, my, my selfish side is coming out now, you know, like imagine if you had the money and you had the opportunity to buy this, I would. Yeah. <laughs> are, you right? are, you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I got the opportunity to own the Coral Castle. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, I will. You know, if I have the opportunity, yeah, hell, heck yeah, I would, you know. But like me as a, as a private individual, as opposed to a corporation, I may not have the, the resources to upkeep this property. You know what I mean? So like, like I said, it's actually probably a good thing that a corporation did actually buy this and that is using it as like, you know, a, an attraction of sorts, you know, because right. that, for that very reason, they are able to upkeep it and, and keep it in good standing, good, good condition, you know? Yeah. There's a couple yeah. of, a couple of theories as to how he moved the stones. And one of them is that he used some sort of sonic levitation to move the stones. And this is a really interesting idea because sonic levitation is a real thing. You can look up videos and whatever, and it is possible, mm -hmm. but it's sort of hard to imagine him doing that to like a 30 ton block, especially when he was building this thing, <laughs> you know, from oh. in the 1930s and forties, uh, you know, throughout it. I mean, I'm a little skeptical on that one, but it's a really fun idea that, you know, yeah. and, and another idea of how he did it was some sort of magnetic levitation because he was so into magnetism and you could find pictures of like his, you know, his structures and stuff and, you know, weird things on there. And people will say, oh, this is, you know, how he did it. And this proves that it was magnetic levitation and all this stuff. But unfortunately, when I was researching this, I did find a video somebody did made a really short documentary about him building stuff and we have actual video of how he did it so the mystery has been solved actually there really is no mystery yep. for the coral castle you can find videos of how he did this he basically would quarry the stuff as as we were talking about earlier 
the stones themselves were quarried on site and for for the second castle so he moved the first castle which i don't know did we say the first castle he named he named it uh ed's place <laughs> which yeah. Uh, simple uh, but you, eloquent you could do better than that come on why don't we brainstorm some <laughs> names here you know what i mean like just ed's place come on come hey, on man. Keep, if, it, keep it simple stupid if, hey, if you're gonna name it you know like, if you're gonna name it ed's place you better have <laughs> you better have a pool table you better have a bar serving beer and maybe some tvs playing sports right? you know what i mean right. you better have a good but bar. he, follow, he yeah. followed the dots method and is don't overthink shit so that's what he, yeah yeah, yeah exactly. he followed the, that to the team. second spot was named rock gate Yes. Right? Before it was named Coral Castle. Yeah. So Coral Castle. Yeah. He did not call it Coral Castle. That was an, a more recent invention. And it was probably more of a marketing thing because it's not actually built out of Coral. But yeah. Um, it's a Coral Castle is a much better game than Rock Game. Damn. <laughs> a game. <laughs> game. No, Coral Castle is a much better name than uh, Rock Gate or, you know, Ed's Place or whatever. The second location was actually sort of on the quarry and the, the stuff was on the land. So when he quarried something, he didn't have to move it very far, you know, a few feet or whatever. So what he would do is he would use a big giant tripod and basically a pulley system. It was, uh, it was like a chain pulley and he would use that to raise the blocks up from the quarry and to quarry it because the yeah. stone was so soft. He used, they think he used sort of like a, a cutting chain, sort of like from a chainsaw, but more for rock. And that would allow him to get the really precise cuts that we talked about earlier, where, you know, these blocks are so, so, pre, you know, so precise that they don't, he didn't use mortar to hold everything together. It's just gravity. And the cuts yeah. are so clean that, you know, light doesn't shine through them. So it was, you know, the, the very, it was very precise, but he was also probably a very talented guy. But anyways, we have video showing him lifting these blocks out of the quarry and then after using that big tripod to lift it up using basically, you know, a chain pulley that you could use, you could pull it with your hands. Now there yeah. are some people who, who, there's some evidence that he used like an electric motor to help him, which would, you know, make sense because you're, you're basically talking about like gear reductions or whatever if you're lifting something that's 30 tons you're going to need a lot of chain and it's going to take you a long time to pull that thing up so he probably used some sort of electricity and an electric motor to help him along the way but either way it appears that he used a tripod a basically a pulley and then when he got it up he would use sort of like a ratchet like a chain ratchet on rollers Oh, yeah. to move it to where yeah. it needed to go and then use a pulley again to lift it up into place. And that, that appears to be the case. It's unfortunate because I do like things that are mysterious, but how he built it seems to be completely solved. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, unfortunately, because like I said, I like mysterious things, but yeah. on the other hand, sometimes it is fun to solve the mystery and say, Oh, that's how he did it. You know, like after, all these years, nobody bothered to check this video. And we finally found this video that somebody pointed out, you know, and if you watch certain YouTube videos or like ancient aliens or something, they'll talk about the case and they'll pretend like this video doesn't exist. Maybe they don't know about it. Maybe they're ignoring it for a better story. <laughs> and, and then they'll talk about the more sensational aspects, which to be honest, are quite a lot of fun, but for me personally, you know, there's enough weird stuff out there. We don't have to invent weird stuff, you know, right? The right, Coral sure, Castle sure. is impressive enough on its own. And I think that, you know, even though Ed himself probably would have been all over, you know, if somebody said he had a magnetic levitating device, he would, he would have said, yep, that's exactly how I did it. You know, <laughs> he yeah. would probably would have been on board with that. But I think, you know, in hindsight, we got to give the guy the credit he deserves for building this fantastic monument or monolith. Or, I, yeah. I don't know what you'd call it, but man, this thing Maybe is badass. Monument. He did it's this single-handed all by himself. It's incredible. I feel like there's a missed opportunity to remake the Flintstone live action movie here. Like, yeah. I'm just going to say <laughs> yeah. it right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a yabba dabba do of a time. Yeah. Hell freaking yeah. That was... <laughs> 
if if Fred Flintstone was somehow immortal, this is how he would spend his time in the early 20th century, right? Absolutely. <laughs> building, building the Coral Castle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and there's uh, there's so many interesting structures on this. We can't really do them justice by talking about them, you know, in a podcast because, you know, we're not doing photos. Although I definitely do want to get into doing a video format and I'm I'm sort of reading up on that a little bit. And I actually had somebody who who said they want to do some video editing for us, so maybe that'll happen. I'm not sure, but um you know, for now it's audio only, but he did make a lot of different structures that we mentioned some of them earlier, but his walls, he made like eight foot tall walls built out of blocks. He put carvings on some of the stuff. He made furniture like chairs. He made tables. You um, know what? Rocking chairs. I, what's what's I up? I can tell you one thing what's as that? far as video format goes. Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't want to see me right now. I am butt naked in a 98 degree room and sweating my ass off. <laughs> hey. It's on you. Hey, would not be money. would not be a good situation. I don't want to show that to anybody. There's there's something. <laughs> hey, there's so something for everybody. The scene I guarantee you, there's somebody out there who wants to see that ETA. <laughs> oh, I I don't know. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> it's, All it's right great. then, yeah. like maybe but, there might be maybe one person out there that is into that kind of uh, sick uh, bullshit. But like, no, I I, I kind of doubt that. <laughs> That's like that reminds me of that scene with Ace Ventura when he's in the rhino. It's a oh big yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> Toasty in these rhinos. And then that little fan goes out and he starts like like poking it like I know. oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I love it. And that and then that family is like on, oh, on a uh, uh, sorry. On a, yeah, that family's on a safari and like they're they're passing by and he starts Daddy. like exiting out the asshole of the rhino. <laughs> yes, yes. <I> <laughs> Daddy, what's going on? It's a miracle yeah, birth. Yeah. That that is one of the funniest like scenes in any like movie I've ever seen, dude. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. I I can't tell you how how hard I laughed my ass off the first time I ever saw that scene. It was just so ridiculous. It's, I agree. I was in the same spot, man. That I remember that was the first thing that actually like left me in tears. First movie, like yeah. Or when he had when he had that one bad guy, and then he was like poking his eyeball. He's like, "No, my younger, my older brothers used to do that to me." Wee, I, wee, wee. <laughs> and he brings the plate out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You digress. <laughs> <laughs> Good times, man. Hilarious. But I like, not necessarily well, related to the Coral Castle. <laughs> speaking of that, my favorite. My favorite uh, scene from the Ace Ventura movies is that opening scene from the first one where he's delivering a package. He's like an undercover package delivery guy. Cause dude, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've gotten packages from UPS that looked like that. I was like, dude, Oh did, uh, yeah, did, really? Did yeah. Ace Ventura deliver this crap? I mean, what the hell's going on? How is Absolutely. it possible to smash a package yeah. that much? Like I don't know what it is. All the corners are smashed I get, in. Like the, the the box no longer represents like a, a square or yeah, anything like yeah. that. Like it's, <laughs> I get stuff delivered by <laughs> FedEx or you by or FedEx by the post office or whatever. It's fine. But when UPS delivers something, I'm like, oh shit! Is UPS is that my only delivery choice? All right, fuck. Here we go. Probably gonna have to return this, but let's give it a shot. They're the worst. Yeah, well, I don't know how they're still in business. Well, That's how bad they are. They're. I mean. I avoid if if I have to pay extra money to not get UPS, I do it because it takes so much time and effort to return stuff. An extra five bucks to go with somebody else is worth it for me. <laughs> it's they are so <laughs> bad, they're just horrible. So I, I really relate great. to that scene. It cracks me up. You know, if you just watch it on YouTube or something by itself, it's hilarious. But all right, back to the Coral Castle. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of structures that you can look at online. There's plenty of pictures. You can view them for yourself. And a lot of them are really cool looking. They all have, you know, names like he built something that's like sort of like a telescope. It's not really a telescope, but you know, you know, fountains, a sundial, um, a tower, something that's called the barbecue. It's not really a barbecue, but it's a really cool place. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to go there if you are, you know, budget limited or not even in this country, because let's be honest, like, you know, even, even now it seems like this whole COVID thing should be over by now, but 
uh, those travel restrictions, man, there's still some places where like, I mean, you know, it's if over you, in some areas, but if, definitely not in others. If you, if you test positive, oh boy, you've just won the fuck you lottery because you're going to be in quarantine for a couple of weeks and you're going to have to pay for that stuff. So Damn. travel right now can be difficult, but you can see it online. If you don't want to travel, if you can travel to the area, I highly recommend it. Cause it looks badass. But yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much the uh, the Coral Castle story we had here. Um, there's, I think we went through pretty much everything. Um, is there anything we missed? Did any any, uh, any last stuff we didn't talk about that you guys can think of? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's little details and stuff that we glanced over. But little tidbits, I mean, like you know, Billy Idol wrote a song about Coral Castle. Did oh, you yeah. really? Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it was inspired. I didn't, I didn't know that. No shit. It was inspired by the Coral Castle. I actually, inspired by it. Yeah. yeah. I actually saw Billy Idol in concert one time at the um uh the Pomona oh, Fairplex. No it was a yeah, it was oh, a, what? Uh, really? It was the LA County Fair and it was being held at the Pomona Fairplex, which is by the way one of my favorite spots of all time because it's like one of the historical like uh, origination points of like 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 a uh, drag racing for for you know in yeah. the United States, you know what I mean? That's it's one of those ass. early spots. And so we, we we grew up around the Pomona Fairplex, and I actually, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Agent uh, Anderson used to work there, right? Refueling planes uh, at no. Bracket Airfield, right next to it, right? No, but oh no, you didn't. Oh, I thought you did. No, but I did Bracket. when I was when I was younger. When I, I first graduated high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I went to A and P school, airplane mechanic school, which I didn't complete for various reasons that we won't go into now. But is basically, I decided it wasn't for me. But uh, one of the things we did that was really cool is we had, on Fridays, we had class at Brackett Airfield. The school had a hangar there. This is Mount Sac, Mount San Antonio College, had a hangar at Brackett Airfield. So we would go there, and they had some fucking badass stuff there. Like, they had a long easy. They had a couple airplanes. They had, like, a Huey helicopter. So we got to do, like, at, at Mount Sac, you would do projects on... Like, here's a carburetor, you do a project on just the carburetor. Or here's a motor, you do stuff on just the motor. But at Bracket, we got to work on, like, entire airplanes and kind of see how everything... So it was really cool to go do stuff at an actual airport. I don't know if they still do that, but when I was there, it was... Man, I I looked for... Every every week, I looked forward to those Fridays where I got to go into Bracket. Man, I I just love airports, man. There's just something about them, especially small airports like Bracket. It's just... And, oh, one time, so, by the way, one of the craziest things I've ever seen there was one time there was like a really bad storm and the, the hangar for, for the school was sort of on that. There's like a row of hangers and we, ours was like on the end and yeah. there was, um, and at the end there's like, you know, some, some of the tarmac and stuff. And then there's uh, like a field over there. But one time a, the Goodyear blimp had to make like an emergency landing because the storm oh, was like really bad. And they had tethered it. Like it, it was the craziest thing. Like they tethered the balloon to the ground and the storm was so bad that it was, it was kind of like tethered by the front of it. And you just, we just looked out there and you see this big giant fucking blimp just flapping around stuck to the Dang. ground. It was the craziest no thing I've ever seen as far as aviation goes. <laughs> Anyways, it was like, yeah. what, right? what the Whoa. fuck is that doing? There? There's a big giant fucking <laughs> blimp right next to the hangar, just flopping around out there in the wind. It was, it was insane. That's crazy, dude. But, it yeah. is crazy. Oh yeah. That'd be something to see. That's for damn sure. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I think this is a good time to wrap it up. So if you enjoy the show, sure. you could really help us out by checking out the affiliate link in the description. This week we've got moving sand art. Yes, that's right. You too can have moving sand art for your house, desk, or wherever you choose to place it. It's pretty cool stuff. It's one of the, I'm sure everybody's seen this before. There's various different, there's different types. I'll, I'll just send a link to the general one. And it's basically one of those things where, you know, you kind of turn it upside down and the sand slowly comes down and it ends up a lot of the time looking like sort of like a mountain range or something. It's really cool. Uh, Some of them are very beautiful looking and Hopefully yeah. everybody will enjoy this and want to support the show. Your purchase helps the show and doesn't cost you anything extra. Keep it strange. 